Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams, and I'm so grateful that you're here today. I'm going to talk about being an empath and five tips to help with that during challenging times. And if you are empathic, you take on the thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations of another person, you know it is not always easy. And um, I've lived with this all my life, although I didn't know for a long time there was actually a term for it and what was going on. A lot of my life I was trying to figure out why do I feel so crummy <laughs> and what is this and where did it come from? And, and it's crazy making to have to try to do that. So um, in this show, we're going to talk about some tools to use to make life as an empath so much easier, especially during challenging times. So what exactly is an empath? Um, and before we dive into that, I want to give you the ability to reach out to me. I love to hear from you. I hear from listeners just about every day um, with topics and also comments on the shows. I got a lot of thank yous about um, the show with Paul Selig last week, and it truly was a delight. Paul is one of my favorite authors. So if you haven't heard that show, put it on your list and you can find it on iom.fm. You can find it on Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, YouTube, all the different places. Um, it was definitely a gem of a show. So where can you find me? Meet Kathy Williams, Kathy with a K, Williams with an S, dot com is the best place to do that. And um, there is a link to subscribe to the email list as well. And you can um, um, get a free money rain exercise there um, and reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you and make this show really relevant. And I, I know a lot of you are empathic and sensitive, um, being aware of other people's thoughts, feelings, and emotions is not always easy. And what's funny is I looked up the definition of empath earlier today just to get the de dictionary sense. And it's funny because it says chiefly in science fiction. Okay, <laughs> um, a person with the paranormal ability to apprehend the mental or emotional state of another individual. And if you're like me, you know that this is really uh, a real um, capacity. And, um, you know, I, my first real experience of like knowing something wasn't mine was when I was probably 20. And I had a conversation, I was in the dressing room of the ballet company and I had a conversation with someone and I left. And for a good three hours afterwards, I just felt terrible. But our conversation wasn't about anything terrible. And I just felt like, what is this? Why am I feeling this way? I wasn't like this before this conversation. But I definitely was afterward. And, um, of, of course, most of my anxiety that I felt during that time, during my teens and my 20s, wasn't mine either. I was just aware of it. So a lot of us um, with empathic ca capacities are just uber aware of other people. And then we go around trying to figure it out, fix it. How do I do this? You know, I even got a, con a um, call from a client, a, a friend and client uh, last week or two weeks ago. Uh, and he was saying, oh my gosh, I just feel so utterly terrible. And um, uh, as a facilitator, he was going to be teaching a class the following day. And I said, are you just aware of all the people in the class? tomorrow. And uh, it must have been two weeks ago, because last week, again, he taught a class and he said, Kathy, the day before it, again, I just felt really terrible. And it's like, okay, cool. You know that that's not yours. So the first um, ex uh, real tool I got to learn to use this was when I was interning with a Hawaiian kahuna. 
and the Kohuna are shamans. And this particular lineage um, has to do with energy. So we were learning all about energy healing and, and what to do and different strategies and skills with energy. And they are actually some of the most potent, amazing tools I still use today. Um, what I learned from her. And she's no longer teaching, unfortunately. Um, but one of the easiest things for me, who, who used to wake up and feel terrible for no reason, like <laughs> just boom, okay, I feel awful, was to learn to put a vortex under my bed. Okay, so what's this like? This is essentially like an energetic bathroom drain to drain whatever it is you're experiencing and you're feeling down into the earth. So I did this just by asking to, okay, let me place a vortex that goes down into the earth under my bed and let it suck away everybody else's stuff. And, and this worked after three nights, I stopped waking up with anxiety, waking up kind of depressed, waking up however I was waking up that was off, um, simply by doing that. It was powerful and amazing for me. So, you know, I'm gonna talk about five different tools today. Actually, probably more, because <laughs> I can't help myself. Um, but what I invite you to do is use what works for you because not everyone is going to resonate but the ones that do are going to be like medicine it's like not every medicine works for every single person in fact if you're empathic or, or sensitive medicines probably don't actually work for you in the same way that they work for other people like pharmaceuticals stuff like that so use what works take it and allow that to change and enhance your life. And, and just, you know, if something feels like, nah, that one's not for me, just let it go. Yeah, you don't have to use all five. But this one definitely worked. And I being, you know, I, I'm a very intuitive person. I'm um, clairvoyant and clairaudient, so I hear things too. I'm a very visual person, so I like to see that bathroom drain, like that drain going down into the earth. If you're not a visual person, just ask for it to be placed there, and it will be. I highly recommend it. <laughs> you, you may not wake up with all the stuff anymore. And, and what's so interesting is, you know, for me, particularly on the days that there was sort of, I wouldn't say world disaster, but um, country sort of uproar, upheaval, maybe on the days when the stock market went down or, you know, there was some piece of like um, um, news that got everyone in an uproar. Those would actually be the days when I w woke up and it was the worst. Just like, oh, what just happened to me? <laughs> I was like, this is not even yours, honey. <laughs> it's just your awareness. And so today I'm going to um, not only give energetic tools, but also questions to help you and um, practical action steps as well. Because I think, you know, living on planet Earth, planet Earth is not only an energetic place, right? If we were to just sit in front of a vision board and then all our stuff comes to us, that would be awesome, but that's not how planet Earth works. However, the energy is an important element. All right. Um, asking a question, right? Asking for your desire, asking for something to actualize, asking um, what is this points your awareness in that direction. And whatever we focus on expands. So if we're focusing on why do I feel so crappy? Hey, guess what? <laughs> What's expanding, right? When we focus on, hey, what is actually creating this? We're aiming our flashlight in the direction of you know, the searchlight looking for, oh, it's that. And we can have some clarity and awareness. And then finally, there's the action step, right? So um, energy, well, ask comes first, usually the energy and then the actions. 
and the practical actions, I'm going to give a lot of them. And again, you get to create your own list of what works for you and then what you utilize to feel better. Um, so let's begin with the asking part. And one thing I've indicated a couple of times in the show already is it's not yours, right? This, this cruddy feeling, this pain, this, the, even a lot of the clutter in your head, it's not always yours. And so just by asking, hey, is it mine? And getting a sense, you know, oftentimes you can go to the chest, get a sense of like, that feels, that feels off, or that feels like, yeah, it sort of is. And um, one of the questions I also like to ask is, how much of this is mine? Like what percentage? And then we get to, oh, 10%. Okay, cool. Can you just send back the rest, right? Send it to the universe. It knows exactly what to do with it. You don't have to figure it out. Which relieves a huge burden because I think, um, you know, if we're not aware that something's not ours, we can go around like my friend and client did trying to figure it out all day long, right? Like, who, wh how do I have this? Why is this going on? What, you know, what, what was I thinking that created this rather than just going to, oh, how much of this is actually mine? And sometimes it's zero percent. It's just my awareness, which is another great question. I really like to ask, um, is this just awareness? Is this just awareness? Because when it's just awareness, we don't have to do anything about it, right? It's like when you're just aware that a song you're thinking of is actually in your head because your neighbor is playing it, right? You're hearing it just super faintly. You don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to figure it out. It's just like, oh, it's just awareness. Cool. If it is something you can, or you'd like to do something about, right? Oh, what can I do with it? Can I change this? How could I change it? So we're looking at being solution oriented rather than how did I get this? <laughs> like, it's not even mine, okay. And, um. If you haven't heard my show about energetic cords, that is another one. Write it down. <laughs> Go back to it. Because energy cords are one of the number one um, energetic blocks people have. You know, the Hawaiians call them Aka cords. Um, a lot of people call them just plain cords, energy cords, um, and talk about cutting them really don't suggest cutting them. It's not a good idea energetically. It leaves a part of that cord just hanging, which is not a good idea. So check out that show on cords. But being corded to another individual can be a huge reason why you're feeling their stuff, right? You are energetically connected to that person. And you can only be corded if you agree to it consciously or unconsciously. All right, and on my website, in fact, on the radio page, meetkathywilliams.com forward slash radio, you can find a link to all the replays, and you can also find a link to a cord cutting, uh, a cord clearing session. So clear those cords, don't cut them. Otherwise, one end of that is left hanging. Not an energetically good idea, all right? Um, so, so questions, really taking uh, just a moment to, to ask, like, is this really mine? Is this energetic density someone else's? Is it my awareness of society as, as, as a whole? Is it other entities like spirits? Um, I'm super sensitive to spirits <laughs> a lot of times. Um, 
if if there's a like I can't be in bars right i I just don't feel good in bars because of their presence, but um a lot of times when it's spirits, and all you have to do is ask, is this other entities or spirits right? um it's super easy to clear them right if they're in your space um and the other thing you can do is just ask everyone to back off and give you space which is such a relief. So do that right now. Just ask everyone else's stuff, whether it's a spirit, whether it's a person, just ask their stuff to back off, sort of inviting it all to leave your aura right now. And oftentimes just by doing that, we get a sense of like relief because we have more space for us. Right. So, so um, I'm going to review because I know we're going on a break in just a moment. Like whatever you're experiencing and as we go to break, you can ask like, okay, is this tension actually someone else's? Is this emotion actually someone else's? And if you get a sense of, yeah, it lightens up at all. It wasn't yours. Just um, send it back to the universe to um, do with it as it wishes. And then you can also just explore, like, is this just awareness? Which doesn't mean I have to do anything with it. And we'll be right back with some practical and some other energetic tools to use when you're empathic in challenging times. Thanks so much for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. See you in just a moment. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams. And today we're talking about being an empath, especially in challenging times, like now, right? We may be holed up with people we're not used to spending 24 hours with, <laughs> and it might just be like, ah! Oh, or maybe that's just me every once in a while. Um, so, we talked a little bit about some energetic things we can do. Ask everyone to energetically back out of your space. We could actually also ask people to physically back out of our space. But that doesn't always work well. <laughs> um, uh, but boundaries can be useful in a way. I'm not a fan of energetically putting up walls and barriers. I think as people, we do that enough. Um, but over the course of the show, as we go on, I will give some energetic strategies um, for allowing people's stuff to not stick you so much. But in this moment, in this part of the show, part two of the show, I'd like to kind of go into some um, action steps you can do when you're aware of people's stuff. So one of the things, um, uh, um, and many of us are on the path of transformation and evolution, and we've learned a lot of skills and different things, and we often already have some idea of what works for us, yet I found a lot of the time when the going gets tough, when we're in it and feeling, you know, heavy and contracted and, and emotionally off, a lot of times we don't access the tool or the thing that works for us the best. And so one of the things I've learned to do that seems to work really well is to write a list. Okay, so the list would be, well, what helps you when you're feeling off? And you may say, oh, right, when I go put my feet on the earth, it helps me. Um, when I get some physical distance, uh, ha ha. <laughs> when I get distance from other people, like when I just go lie down and breathe slowly for five minutes, I come back to me. When I, you know, for myself, when I do um, the things for Vata, which are um, um, Ayurveda, so Ayurveda has um, three different 
um, types of people or doshas, which are like the airy people, uh, ethereal people um, are more vata, okay? The fiery people, the more driven people are more pitta and the earthy people are more kapha. And so all of us have a combination of these three, although we have more of an inclination toward one. So if I'm feeling really high strung and, and like, oh my God, all this stuff and, and uh, following the Vata regimens really helps me. So that is slowing down, eating more warm foods, nourishing, maybe root vegetables, soups, stuff like that helps me. Um, turning off a lot of the external, like all this, all sorts of noises, stuff like that. So um, a list of what helps, right? Oh, oh, soothing music helps me come back to me. Cool, put that on your list. Oh, um, not trying to get so much done, right? Or mm, telling my children, for me, telling people, I can only listen to one of you at a time, so you're going to have to take a ticket and wait in line, right? Really helps me. So, so listing out, what are my tools? Asking questions goes on your list. Maybe clearing the cords goes on your list. Um, you know, using clearing tools, whatever those are. I, one, one of them that I'll share with you for me is an energetic waterfall. It's like taking a shower, but it's energetic. And in fact, it's, it's so interesting because I started using this and I started using it with my clients and they were getting great results. And then I realized, oh, Ho'oponopono, you know, the, the, one of the versions I learned um, talks about this. They don't call it a waterfall, but this is definitely what they're doing. So, so inviting energy that could be um, white, it could be gold, it could be purple, whatever color, to come from above your head through your body and through your field, clearing out everybody else's stuff and the stuff that doesn't belong. Right? Immediately, I feel better. Like right this second, <laughs> describing it to you, I feel better. Um, so definitely a useful activity. Uh, for one of my clients, taking a shower, just clearing off, like physically clearing off stuff is a huge, makes a huge difference. Um, when I do body work on people or, or sometimes even energy work on them, changing clothes, right? Like, like getting rid of whatever might still be carrying their stuff makes a huge difference. So what I'm going to suggest is what helps you when you're feeling like, oh gosh, I can't do this. What helps you? Go into Walmart if that's where you need to go or be in a, a, a party or a large crowd. What have you found in the past that has helped you? Maybe it's imagining this waterfall just flushing through you at all times. But making a list of that and then reminding yourself of that. I love phone reminders. Right. On my calendar, the, the phone will remind me um, to ask myself. One of the questions I love to ask myself is, how much space can I be to change this? Because if we're taking on someone's stuff, you know, the really interesting and empowering thing is we're vibrationally a match to it. If we weren't, it wouldn't affect us, which is super cool because then I, we can realize, oh, I'm tapped into the morphic field of this. I'm tapped into the morphic field of this, you know, let's say sadness. Let me unhook from that. And immediately, you can feel, have a different sense of being in your body. I'm tapped into the morphic field of anxiety right now. 
okay? That energetic field of anxiety, let me unhook from that. And boom, a different reality, right? Because we're not going to sense that unless we're congruent with it, unless we're tapped into it. Why? Because there are tons of other things we could be um, congruent with as well. We could be tapped into the morphic field of prosperity and feel abundant and prosperous and wonderful instead of sad. It just happens to be with, like, uh, let, me, let me describe it this way. Like, you're vibrating with a color, and so it's the color that you're wearing. Lavender, lavender looks terrible on me. I never wear it, right? <laughs> like, but I could be wearing lavender and therefore I'm feeling a certain way. Well, let me take that shirt off and put on a different shirt. They're all available. Sadness is available. Prosperity is available. Bliss is available. All of it's available right now. It's what are you resonant with? So if we specifically identify, oh goodness, I'm not really that interested in, in being tapped into the morphic field of anxiety right now. Let me unhook from that. What would I prefer? I prefer to feel calm and aligned and at peace. Let me tap into that. That is also available. Okay. So it, it happens quickly. And initially, as you do it, maybe it won't be as quick. Oh, with practice and practice and practice again, it becomes one of those things where you can identify quickly, ah, there's the sadness. But the sadness is not who I am. Let me choose something else. And you know that that's available too. All right. So whatever tools I've mentioned, like listing them, Whatever tools or strategies help you. I mean, one of the really kind of silly things that helps me is if I'm feeling overloaded by other people's stuff or sensitive or super aware of like entities or spirits, putting my hair up makes a huge difference for me. Like not letting my hair touch my back and my shoulders. Why? Because I'm already super aware of other, other stuff. Right, and so that one added burden is like, ah! <laughs> um, so I'll just put it up or put it in a ponytail and take it away and remove that from what's going on. So that's on my list as well. I, I know a lot of people, you know, go to the alcohol or the food or, or the sleep to, a, or, you know, chocolate or whatever it is. To, to kind of dull the awareness. But if you can list out what tools and what strategies you use that are therapeutic and beneficial, oil massage, right? Those vata strategies are meant to soothe and calm the nervous system. Um, and then put that list where you see it. It may help you avoid a trip to the refrigerator. It may help you, like, oh, yeah, unhook from the morphic field. Cool. Done. That was easy. Okay. So reminders. Reminders on your phone or reminders near the refrigerator or in the bathroom, wherever it's going to work for you. A huge, huge gift for that. All right. Um, cool. So, so, um, one of the questions, again, that I have a reminder of and for is how much space can I be with us? Okay, because if we have a point of view, if we have the point of view, I need to get rid of this, right? What are we going to be doing? We're actually going to be pushing against. And when we're pushing against something, what are we, we doing? We're giving it energy. Right? So if instead I can invite myself to be more spacious, okay, things can shift quickly. The very interesting thing about emotion is it's energy in motion. And energy in motion moves. Okay? And um, I, it, I know the show was in July or August. I did a uh, 
a show in which I specifically um, gave some strategies for moving energy um, during challenging situations. So you can check that one out. I think it was something about challenging people in challenging times, something like that. Um, energy in motion, when we're not pushing against it, when we're not glomming onto it and saying, well, oh no, I have, to fig I have to get rid of this. I have to figure it out. How did it get here? Why does this always happen to me? Right, when, when we're not fixated on it, it can actually move. Right? And we could even ask, what would it take to move through this quickly? And then you're reminded of one of your wonderful tools. Oh yeah, yeah, let me do the vortex then. Or let me return it to the universe. It's only, you know, 5% mine. Okay, cool. Well, that just relieved me a lot. Okay. Um, also, you know, when, one of the things that moves emotion a lot is exercise. Why? Because we're actually moving the physical body or um, flowing energy. And we're going to talk a lot more about flowing energy and energetic strategies in the third section of the show. But the energetic waterfall, again, is kind of flowing energy through your body, moving it. Because what we resist persists. I know you've heard it and we're like, oh yeah, but it's the truth. And so even the question, how could I stop resisting this? You know, I taught a class um, last year called Five Days of Energetic Exercises for Receiving. And one of people's favorite tools from that class, not unequivocally, but it was pretty much a favorite tool among the group was, was just the phrase, yes, I receive you. Thank you for being. So if you perceived whatever it is you're experiencing, the sadness, the angst, the anxiety, the, the tension, whatever it is, and you said to it, yes, I receive you. Thank you for being. Instead of viewing it as something to get rid of and push away, you're almost like the mother. I remember Thich Nhat Hanh talking about when you're angry, embracing it like you're the mother and you're just loving it. And you're, yes, I receive you. Thank you for being. And watching how that shifts the relationship, because now it's no longer like an enemy. It's much more like a, oh, yeah, I receive you. Whatever is right now is my teacher or is a gift. And therefore, you've dropped the resistance. Yes, I receive you. Thank you for being. And you're there with it. And you can have a, a transformation in your relationship with whatever you're experiencing. And in that way, it does really become a gift for your evolution. So when we come back, we, we just talked about um, listing what helps you and then receiving it without resistance doing the energetic waterfall. When we come back, I'm going to talk about one of the things I've recently started to do that's amazing. Um, and also a couple of energetic strategies that I've found super useful. So I look forward to sharing with those, you, those with you. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everybody. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams, and today our conversation is about surviving challenging times as an empath. You know, we can really feel the, the images and the, the negative messages and the emotions um, really strongly. And so I've been talking a lot about the strategies that, that I use to overcome that. And one of the things that I do um, when I'm feeling sensitive or off or uh, you know emotionally <laughs> aware 
is I have a list and this list uh, I will put on the radio page of um, Sexy Mom Abundant Life um, radio page at meetkathywilliams.com. And I'm gonna make it as a PDF that you can print out and use like I use it because it's been so useful for me to have this list and just to ask myself and tap into and in you know and use your own intuitive way whatever that is for you and if you feel like oh, I always doubt my intuitive way um, last March I did a show not March 2020 but March of um, 2019 I did a show on awareness giving different strategies for you to identify what is your intuitive way of receiving information and you're going to find more and more of that kind of tool at meetkathywilliams.com because I'm going to talk more and have more um, valuable information for empaths and um, deepening your intuition so that you don't have to doubt yourself anymore. So um, if you're not on the mailing list over there, go to meetkathywilliams.com, sign up for the mailing list. That way you can get notified about all those tools because I know how bad it can be to doubt yourself because um, you're just so aware of everyone else's point of view. I've been there. So um, what the list is, is it has all these different things on it. It says water and food, salt, nature, sleep, magnesium, quiet, um, clearing, tub. Okay, so, and what it is, is I go through each of the items and I say, okay, is, is this what I need more of right now? Salt, yes or no? Water, yes or no? Nature, oh, it's that. Rest, oh yeah, <laughs> right? And, and I get a very clear for myself yes or no like yes yesterday it was very clearly that um more sleep and more rest would be useful for me and i was like oh and um my body was feeling it right um and so this list is a whole um just basic things magnesium is one of those that's so useful for rest as well and of course if you're um, a menstruative woman um, magnesium is one of those first nutrients to kind of go, and so we feel off. That's why the chocolate craving, although maybe not <laughs> all of why we have the chocolate cravings, but um, nature time, right? Grounding. So all the items on this list are to go through and say, oh yeah, that's the missing piece today, right? Oh, I haven't had enough protein today. Okay, cool. Or oil or, you know, quiet, whatever it may be. And you just go through the list and you're like, oh yeah, that one. You can almost, all, uh, if you wanna do a speedy version, you go through and you ask whatever it is to highlight itself, sort of like it jumps out at you. And, oh yeah, I really haven't had enough water today. Okay, cool, right? And so it's a sort of like a homeostasis list of, oh yeah, I forgot because I'm in the middle of my, my life. I forgot that I haven't gotten out in nature for the past three days. Yeah, that one's really calling to me. That would be, just be so valuable for my, my own inner balance. Um, and then, so I will put that list on the radio page at meetkathywilliams.com. So if, if you like to use a pendulum, whatever it is, but it's, it seems kind of basic, but it's been so valuable for me. And I love using it because it's really simple. And sometimes simplicity is that thing that we're missing. <laughs> All right. So we're going to um, shift now into a couple of different energetic things. Now, I know a lot of you have met me through my Access Consciousness work. Um, which I've had found valuable. But one thing I found when I was doing that work primarily is that I would sort of abandon, maybe, yeah, abandon some of the other super, super valuable wisdom and knowledge and tools that I had received 
And so um, now I no longer just, uh, you know, focus in one direction. I use whatever works. And so one of the things that Access Consciousness talks about is expand your energy out. And this is really valuable and has helped me so much being able to go on Facebook or into Walmart. Actually, I don't go there. Into Costco. All right. Into these places that have a lot of people. Because if you think about this, like, let's imagine someone else's energy as a glass of lemonade. Okay, lemonade is a little bit sour, but a little bit sweet. Okay, so their energy is a glass of lemonade. If you are a bathtub, right? A bathtub is not very big. Um, if you pour that glass of lemonade, their energy into your bathtub full of water, it's going to have a pretty profound effect. Okay. However, if you make yourself bigger, which you are, there's no doubt about it. You are bigger than your body. You're more aware than just this flesh body. Okay. You're bigger than that. So if you make your energy ocean-sized or even lake-sized, and we pour in a glass of lemonade, what happens? It's not such a big deal, is it? It doesn't really affect the ocean to have on, on a larger scale, to have that glass of lemonade in there. Okay, so the analogy is this way. If you make your energy bigger, and right now you can do that by expanding to sense the four walls of the room. Or if you're, you know, outside, just imagine expanding your, your energy to be room-sized. And then house-sized. And then neighborhood or town-sized, right? Your energy is getting bigger. So... When you go into Costco, you're already bigger than Costco. When you go to the party, you're already bigger than all that stuff. So the effect will be minimal or non-existent, right? So the bigger your energy, the less things can stick you. Sort of like the more spacious you are, and the question I was asking earlier, how much space can I be with this? The fewer points of view, the less dense you are, the fewer things can stick you. And that alone can change everything. That is the thing that allowed me to be able to use Facebook without being pulled in every direction and pushed in every direction because everyone wants you to buy their stuff and, and pay attention to them and like their things. You know, it's like, whoa, kind of, uh, you know, I got freaked out before. And I also could not go in Costco because <laughs> it was just like, ah, that spacious, being that spaciousness. Now here's the thing. The opposite can also be true, okay? Um, pulling your energy in can also be super useful. Okay, so that means, let's see, going, like, if you um, know about chakras, you could imagine yourself going into the pinpointed center of each of the chakras. It's a very, very useful technique for not being as pulled in all directions by other people's opinions and energies. Going to the very, very lightest pinpoint in the center of each of those chakras or drawing your awareness into sort of the column that goes through each of the chakras in the center of your body. Okay, just sort of from above your crown all the way down to your tailbone. Very, very effective for coming back to you. Okay, and it's funny because these are sort of opposite approaches, right? Expand way out or pull way in. Both of them are useful. And so, and it's not a matter of one is better or or more right for you they could be right in 
different situations where you're in your house and you're feeling everybody's stuff and you're like, oh, wait, let me try this thing of like directing my awareness into the very center of each chakra. And wow, do I feel more integrated. And now what do I choose, right? Because I'm more aware of what's true for me, what's aligned, which is <laughs> you're, you're aware of the alignment of each chakra and you're, you're aware of what's aligned for you and choose accordingly. Because I know as an empath, it's so easy to take into consideration everyone's point of view and see, kind of see the validity of all of it instead of like, well, what's actually true for me? And so drawing your attention like that can be a huge gift. So these energetic tools of expanding way, 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 way out and being super spacious is useful. Or drawing in and coming into that very subtle awareness and alignment is also very useful. And then lastly, I just wanted to say, you know, if you're dealing with someone you consider an energy vampire, I have done a show on that before. Um, but one of the things you can do is kind of fire hose them energy. And we're like, a lot of times I hear people say, well, Githy, why wouldn't I wall and barrier? That's what everybody else says to do, right? Put up a wall, put up a barrier. And what I want to say is, well, that assumes that this energy is your energy, right? That you're giving them your energy. And what if you don't give them your energy, you give them universal energy? Totally different. So giving them universal energy means that that energy either comes from behind you and through you, and you fire hose it at, at that needy person. Or you can pull it from above your head or from the earth and fire hose it at them. Right? Because they're not actually taking your energy. Right? You're using universal energy. And they want more energy from you. And you just give it to them from the universe as well. It's very, a very powerful thing to do and you can never be drained if you do it that way because again what most of us do in the presence of needy people people who are sucking your energy is we resist well resisting does what it takes energy it's draining to resist something but if we say oh yeah no problem right you need energy awesome i'm gonna give you as much as you want because it's not actually mine i don't have to resist it there's such a gift in that oh gosh now i've given you a lot more than five tools <laughs> but i want to recap so the first one is really questions is it mine how much of it is mine oh what am i resonant with with right now and then you can unhook from the morphic field of that or you can send back what's not yours. Like, oh, okay, cool. It's just awareness. Is this just awareness? Yeah, it's just awareness. Also, then we talked about energetic cords a little bit. Um, not too much, but there is a show on that. You can go to the archives on Ohm Times Radio or even the uh, great places meet kathywilliams.com forward slash radio because it has the links to Spotify and all the different places you can listen. Um, and, then, and then a list of, well, what's helped me? And that could be an energetic waterfall, or it could be, oh, nature time, or it could be, and reminding yourself. So creating a reminder of, oh, yeah, this is what, what helps me a lot. I also have a list of, you know, the basic things. Do I have enough alone time, water, nature, sleep, magnesium, salt, you know, all the things, okay? Just a homeostasis list. And then the last thing is all the energetic tools, whether that's expanding out 
or pulling in and aligning and then beaming those people, those energy drainers, beaming them lots of energy so you don't have to be in resistance of any of it. Thank you so much for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. Um, I do have a special program for empaths um, coming up, so be sure to sign up for my mailing list at meetkathywilliams.com. Um, application process, you can sign up, it's free. And I look forward to playing with you in the future. See you next week on Ohm Times Radio and in between now and then on Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, and, and um, Facebook as well. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks for listening. And I'm grateful to you. Make it a great week. And remember how you show up matters. Aloha.